Hello YouTube, I am back, I've been gone for quite a while with, uh, I've been busy with exams and things, but I'm back. So, um, today, what we're going to do is I'm just going to show you a couple features of uh, the new ice cream sandwich, Android 4.0. Uh, the first native phone to run Android 4.0 is the Galaxy Nexus. This, you can see, is not a Galaxy Nexus, it's just a Samsung Vibrant. And, um, what I did here was I installed an ice cream sandwich ROM. Now, though, I try, I tweaked the ROM a bit so that it would accurately mimic, um, ice cream sandwich to some extent. You know, there obviously would be some, um, differences, but not really major, and I probably won't show much of them. So, let's get right to it. Obviously, this won't be a full, in-depth review. That would take about a couple of hours, and I don't think anyone has the patience to watch a whole video on Ice Cream Sandwich for a couple of hours. Some, some of you might. So, let's, uh, start it. Okay. First, you can see is the, uh, lock screen is a bit different. You can see that you can now access notifications from the lock screen if it's not locked. Oops. And when you you can directly go to your camera, or you can unlock it. Let's just uh, unlock it here. Here's the home screen, or my home screen. On. on the bottom, you have your standard dock here for icon dock with a application drawer that shows all applications. Um, difference from uh, this is migrated from Honeycomb. Um, a difference from a gingerbread, those two, is that the pagination is now left to right kind of thing instead of vertical. Um, one thing you'll notice here is that we ha now have widgets on the in the application drawer versus you long pressing on your desktop. Now, um, to add these widgets, just uh, hold on one of them and drag it to uh, a screen. And then it's there. Now you can remove it just by holding on it. Remove. Bam. Um, also, uh, something kind of new they have here, oops, let me go back here, is now you can access the uh, Market or Play Store. Now it is. Um, you can go into the Play Store directly, so um, prior I had like a Play Store, app. I'd have a Play Store application here to, but now you can just directly go to the Play Store, Android Marketplace. Uh, next thing. The folders are vastly improved. Now it's more of an iOS style feel where if I want to make a folder, I drag. I want to make a folder, I just t take Gmail, drag it over another application, I have a folder. And you can also name the folder. It's named. To dismiss the folder, just drag this out. And, de and there you have it. Um, one thing you'll notice is on the top there we have a uh, uniform search bar here now it'll stay constant throughout all my home screens and this essentially acts as what the Google search bar would do where if I want to look up something I can just give a second I want to look up a song uh, it would just show me um songs, it would also go through, it can do web searches, it'll just search through about everything. Okay, uh, next thing would be, this is really cool, the ability to resize widgets that are um, here. For example, you can resize this, which uh, you have these little handles here, you just can resize the widget to whatever size you feel like. I want to say I want to make it really small, compact, or I would like to to fill up the home screen. Oops. And there you go. Um, let's see. Something else new is the um, brand new um, multitasking pane. Well, it's not really brand new, but it's migrated from uh, Honeycomb here. And um, with these, you can, can entirely shut down an application by essentially swiping it from the side, which would save battery and a lot of background data. Alright, so... Um, they have a new contacts app called uh, People. Let me open it up for you. Here we go. This just shows some 
people here, and um, the thing about people though is that, say, uh, click on this, is now you can integrate social networks. Like um, I know Jens from um, he's a Minecraft developer. He's on um, he's on my one of my circles for Google Plus, so you can get updates from him in the same application. So you have ultimate social networking integration there. All right. Now, next thing, I will show you the camera. All right, camera. The new camera is one of the major features of the new camera is absolutely zero shutter lag. You can just click, takes a picture, resets, takes a picture, takes a picture. Abs shutter lag, very very minimal. And um, and there's settings here. You can change white balance, um, exposure, some extra things here. Um, also they have a new uh, panoramic mode. What it would when it comes up. There we go. You would just slide it across here. Let me show you. Just slide it across here and all the images would be stitched up into a panorama. I'm just going to cancel that. For the sake of time. Um, let's see, another thing is when you tap a photo, you can choose to share it through a lot of different things. Um, now if we open the gallery, one of the um, other new features of the gallery now is that you can edit photos directly from in the gallery. So just hit menu or you can use the action bar edit and you get a whole pane of editing things you can do to it. You can uh, make it, let's make it black and white. You can add a bunch of special effects and all this. And this is all from inside the galleries app, so you don't have to get a separate application for this, which is really nice. Alright. Uh, no. Alright, what I'm going to show you next is for the ROM, it's a little lagging. It'll, it, it's still pretty fast, but it would, I'm assuming it would run a lot better on an actual um, Galaxy Nexus or another Android for point of phone. So, Gmail, there's a couple things I wanted to show you in Gmail here. One of them included is a brand new UI. This UI features the split action bar here. There's um, one half of the action bar here, other half of the action bar here. Uh, clicking this will show a set of things. These are actually um, separate function keys. Now, if you're somewhat confused with what they do, just hold on them, and it'll tell you exactly what they do. So, um, here. Um, now, you see this action bar, and just picture how it looks now. Now, when I long press on it, it turns into um, what it's what developers and I call the contextual action bar. And what it does is when you long press on items, the um, options change. Here you can, I can archive this, I can mark it as unread, and there's several other actions I can do in an overflow menu here. But that's really handy so that you don't, when you don't long press, you're not immediately interrupted with a screen. You can still uh, I can still select a lot of different things, and then when you unselect, the context bar changes directly back. Okay, I'm going to show you the keyboard here. Let me just compose a fake email. Give a second. I'll just. Now the keyboard here is much improved from, for example, if you long press on this, there's a lot of different options you can choose here. Um, one of the cool features is they have native voice support with live text. I can just say, hello, comma, I am doing this to test voice recognition. You can see it's pretty accurate, and if you don't like this, you can just 
click they have little gray bars underneath this and you can change it and the voice recognition is really cool and it's, it's live too so as you speak the words will be processed in doing that alright I'm just gonna I'll save this draft oh, well. go back to my home screen now and um oh I'm missing an icon uh um, now with this, the action bar, or the, um, notifications, rather, um, you have the carrier logo here, I just have this notification here, um, what you can do, actually, is now, you, if you just want to get rid of a single notification, you can swipe and it'll just vanish. And now, that's great, say if you have, you don't have to clear all the notifications, you can just clear some of the notifications that are irrelevant that you don't want to see. Alright, next up, have the browser. Alright, now the browsers, the UI has changed for the browser, there's, well, you can do that, you can vocally do that, um, but these, these are tabs here, you can create up to 16 tabs, I believe. I believe 16 is the number. If you want to get rid of a tab, you simply swipe. The swipe to dismiss is kind of really a really nice feature that's present kind of throughout the native applications. Here you have um, bookmarks. And the thing about bookmarks is now they are synced with um, your... They're synced with the um, Google Chrome application on your Mac or PC or Linux machine. So now when you have, save a bookmark on your, um, on Google Chrome, it'll automatically show up on the Android browser, which is really nice. Another minor feature is a swipe to, just use these tabs, you can, oops, you can actually click the tabs, or you can swipe from side to side. This is a smaller minor feature. Um, one of the features that I kind of like here is if you go into system settings, and they knew how, they have a new data usage manager here. I just set a limit so I could uh, show you here in a second. And the nice thing about this is that it'll tell you exactly which applications I've been using how much data. And you can set a limit and a warning. Um, it'll you set the when you're um, each monthly day when it renews if you have a limit. And I'll tell you now um, if you click on one of these It'll tell you exactly the amount of data it's been using in the foreground and the background and part. It'll show you in a pie chart form. And this you can restrict background data so that it won't use any background data, but it will still use foreground data if you're in the actual application itself. It's Google's. Facebook, you can see, it's used 2 megabytes foreground, 4 megabytes background. And this only applies for data. I'm it won't, um, on Wi-Fi it's irrelevant, this probably won't, it won't show up on a, this, this was all used on, um, a data network, not on Wi-Fi. Alright, that, um, that's a sm very small part of the hundreds of features in, um, Ice Cream Sandwich. Some of them are migrated from Honeycomb, others are brand new features. Um, obviously, there's things I can't do because of physical capabilities. I can't show you a face unlock. They have because I do not have a uh, front-facing camera. Um, I can't. Also, there's um, NFC technology, near-field communications, where you would tap the back of the phone with um, an NFC-compatible um, device, such as another Android phone, and you can send like contact information, web pages, etc and things. Um, I can't really show you that because I do not have another Android phone or um, I don't have an NFC chip in this phone. Um, face unlock, like I mentioned, is a different way to unlock your um, phone. It's really not... Um, you can unlock it with a picture. I know that. If you have a picture of the person, you can. it'll recognize that. So it's really not the most secure thing. It's more of a, hey, look what my phone can do kind of thing. All right, that's about it on the features thing. There's still a lot more features 
that I haven't done, you can probably look up some features on the official Android website. They usually have a lot of um, things here. And um, don't forget to subscribe, especially since the summer is coming up. I'll be trying to do um, application reviews. So if there's an application you want reviewed, uh, go ahead, uh, send me an email or leave or a message on um, YouTube or some communicate with me somehow and I'll see if I can review the application. Um, unfortunately, I will not be able to review like $50 applications, so please be reasonable in what you want me to review. Um, and do not forget to hit the uh, subscribe button right up there, because I'll be posting a lot more videos now on. Alright, um, good night.